Hello, Vittorio. There's something I don't understand. I don't understand why you're getting praise from your fellow Muslims. They should be jumping on you like a ton of bricks for embarrassing Islam, for one, and for making them appear in the eyes of those who know better to be fools. When they praise you for making these ridiculous points, they're simply exposing their stupidity to the rest of us. Honestly, they should be ashamed of you. Absolutely and complete. They should be furious with you for making them appear so stupid to the rest of us. Alfred Croner. Is it? Is that right? Yeah, Dr. Alfred Croner. Obviously I searched him before, because I'd never heard of him. There's 200 books behind me on science. I've never heard of the guy. But then again, geology is not my, st my thing, so I wouldn't necessarily expect to. So, I searched him. I came up with uh, the name of a fictitious character in a 1939 gangster movie and a recipient of the Knight's Cross from the German army in, I believe, the Second World War. There's nothing else. He hasn't even got a Wikipedia entry. The only entries he's got is under Islamic science sites. To try and put it in perspective for you, I'm going to use a boxing analogy. Just to give you an idea of how you have just humiliated Islam in the eyes of people who know science. You've got your heavyweights. You've got uh, your Muhammad Ali, which would be uh, obviously Albert Einstein. You've got your Mike Tyson, which would be... Sir Isaac Newton. Then you've got, oh, I don't know, Rocky Marciano. That would be Richard P. Feynman. And then you go down your list of great heavyweight champions throughout history. In no particular order, off the top of my head. Um, Owen Schrodinger. Niels Bohr. Max Planck. James Clark Maxwell, Michael Faraday. We could go back to the Renaissance where we've got um, Kepler, Galileo, Copernicus, perhaps even Tycho Brahe, although he was strictly an observational astronomer. Then we go back to the Greeks, who did so much with just their minds and a few basic instruments. We've got uh, Eratosthenes. Democritus, Democritus, Aristarchus of Samos. These are the greats. Now where does Dr. Alfred Croner fit into all this? In keeping with the boxing analogy, the prize fighter that you brought into the ring against all of the heavyweights is the equivalent of a 16-year-old boy who's barely fit to carry the gum shield for the Accrington Stanley amateur silver medalist in the flyweight division. Absolutely unbelievable that you would call him renowned. If the subject were not the truth, it would be hysterically funny. You have brought into the ring your, your latest prize fighter to come up against Albert Bullbreaker Einstein and what you've brought in is a cardboard cutout and you're leaning on his shoulder proudly as if to say this is the this is going to be the next world champion Croner is not fit to talk about nuclear physics he's a geologist and he's not a very good one 
because he refers to the Ice Age as the Snow Age. He gets, and forgive my bad pronunciation of this because geology is not my thing, but I do research, you see. He gets the Pleistocene and the Carboniferous eras mixed up. He says that the ice caps are steadily moving south towards Arabia, when in fact, as we all know, they're shrinking at an alarming rate. This guy is barely a scientist. If you search him on the internet, all you'll find is references to him with his with Islamic science sites. He's nowhere on the science radar. He is nothing. And for <laughs> to say that it's in some sense miraculous that Muhammad could have guessed that the uh, the universe and the earth had a similar origin well that makes Hinduism more miraculous because in the Rig Veda it mentions a similar point of a mutual origin so when you come up with this stuff and you get praise from your Muslim brothers not only have you made yourself look a fool, but you've made them look a fool. And I, I, I don't know how they can praise you for this, but, well I do. It's complete and utter scientific ignorance. <laughs>